Welcome to this lecture in the ongoing series of lectures in real analysis. As of now, I plan this to be the last lecture in the series, but uh, perhaps I can add more material as I want. This is just a comment on trigonometric functions. We haven't discussed trigonometric functions in the entire course. In fact, in the entire course of this channel so far, they are not very easy to develop as you might uh, not guess initially. Anyway, so let us recall the ge geometric definition of sine and cosine as we learned in high school. So what we do is we take, a, we take the unit circle, so the radius is 1, and uh, this is the x-axis. This is the x-axis, and uh, suppose I have some, some angle theta. W what is sine of theta? Sine of theta is defined as the length of the perpendicular. This, this thing is defined as sine theta and this thing is defined as cos theta. So for any angle theta you can define it. Now the problem it is, what is first of all, what is an angle? There are various ways to approach that question. But as it stands, if you just think about it, so far it seems like just a function from the circle, this, this is the notation for the circle, so S1 from the circle to the to the reals. You pick a point on the circle, you drop the perpendicular to the x-axis, and whatever is that length of the perpendicular, you report that as sine of that point. Right? So that is your geometric sine function. Now, how do you convert, how, how do you achieve this kind of function using using what we just described? So what you do is you pick a real number and then you travel whatever that real number is, that much distance you travel, so let's say you picked the real number, let's say maybe 3. So you start at this point, you travel 3 units of distance and then you drop the perpendicular and call that perpendicular length as the sine of, sine of that number. Uh, there may be some scaling involved but uh, this is basically the idea. So that way you get a function from reals to reals. Now to f now to even do that rigorously, I need the the notion of the length. You know what does it even mean to say travel this much length? It is not very clear that you can talk about length of non-straight things. This is a curved thing, so it's not very clear how to t even talk about the length of this. You can do this, but uh, that does not fit very well in this uh, lecture series. I plan to do that in a course in multivariable calculus because then you'd require the notion of derivative of, func derivative of functions valued in R2, not just in R, and even functions which have domain different from R. So that's why I don't want to do it. So this is just a comment on the geometric definition of sine and cosine. This is how we do it in high school, but uh, here we'll take a different route and we'll directly define a function from reals to reals. And uh, this is what we'll call sine and cosine, but they are the same things and to see that they are the same things is, is not very clear and that will happen in a course in multivariable calculus. So what am I trying to get at? Uh, so here is a small lemma which uh, I'll not write down the full proof of, but here is here is the lemma. So first of all, this, this strange looking power series, I'll come to that, is convergent for each x in R. So why is that? So if you just decode this, uh, you'll see that the, that the above power series is actually this. So all the even terms, the coefficients are zero. And I want, to, I want to say that this is convergent everywhere. Uh, so I'll do this via comparison test. Now e to the x is that guy. I know this converges everywhere because I can apply the ratio test. So you just compare the, the given power series with this power series. The first term of this power series is 0 and hence is dominated by that guy. The second coefficient is 1 which is equal to that guy. The second coefficient is 0, which is of course dominated by half. The third coefficient is, well, minus 1 by 3 factorial, which is of course dominated by 1 by 3 factorial. So the absolute value of every coefficient here is dominated by the corresponding, by the absolute value of the corresponding coefficient downstairs. And since this guy converges by comparison test, that guy also converges for each x. So that's it. So that's why this power series converges everywhere. Great, and this is how we define the sine function. Sine function is defined as this power series now, the, the, this guy. So, well, this is some something. Right now it is not at all clear as to what is what does it have to do with circles and perpendiculars dropped 
uh, given a real number, etc., all, all of those things. But well, this is our definition. And if you differentiate this, since power threes are differentiable in their domain of convergence, you differentiate this, you'll get this power series, and this is what we'll call cos x. So this is how we will define sin x and cos x. One can also go to tan x and etc. I don't want to go there. Uh, and uh, if you work a little bit harder, you can also show that sine square x plus cos square x is equal to 1 because we can multiply convergent series. As we saw, if you have two series of one of which is absolutely convergent, then you can multiply them and you can, you can figure this out, but this takes a little bit of a calculation. So you can take this as an exercise if you want. So all of those properties of trigonometric functions which we study in high school, you can prove using these definitions, but it's a little bit cumbersome and not very insightful. Uh, okay, but anyway, this is the best I can do right now. And you, you can wait till the multivariable calculus course for the full story. So for now, this is all for this course. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe. I also have Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.